As a child growing up, I remember when my family would reference Africa, and any time they would talk about Africa, it would be a negative. It was never anything positive. It was always some sort of derogatory term. And so because of that, I, like many people, had no interest or desire in even visiting or traveling to the continent of Africa. I spent more than 40 years of my life with this mentality. So as I traveled throughout Africa, I began to see that the story was broader. The story was not just what they were telling us in America. The story was something so much larger and the context was so much larger and it was a global system that had been in place for more than 500 years. So once I understood that, and I understood the story and how it predated what we were taught in America. I said, there's more I need to learn. I've seen what this continent has to offer. For years, I was told that Africa was a place that I shouldn't come to. I was never even taught how diverse Africa was with more than 50 countries. The interesting part about it is that although Africa was being demonized in America and in the West, when I came here, it was interesting to see how many people from Asia, from Europe, all over the world, they were here building their dream, making millions and billions of dollars, but the African diaspora was discouraged from coming. So why is that? What is it that they did not want us to know about this continent that holds much of our DNA? What's going on everybody? This is Jay and I'm here in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. I'm on the east coast of the country and this is what many people would call the New York of Tanzania. Now, I spent a lot of time in West Africa. You see me all over Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, and I, I can go on and on. But I'm now here in East Africa. And Tanzania is the country that I came to that literally changed my life. After my first trip to Ghana, I said, I need to go to East Africa. Oftentimes, people will go to one country and say, that's it, that's all of Africa. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's so much diversity on this continent and so much diversity within these different countries, I want to show it to you. And that's what this East African adventure is all about here in Tanzania. My name is Nancy Kofi, and I am from Columbia, Maryland. This is Jace Mack and my daughter, Claudette Bellin. My daughter was the one that said she had wanted to come here for a very long time. And so she talked about it and talked about it. And, you know, I got a little excited. I'm slow to get excited, but that's okay. But I kind of caught up on it, and she said, you know, you should come on and go. And so I am so glad that you invited me. Hi, I'm Jay, and I'm really happy to be here. I'm so excited to be here. I love to see all the animals. I'm seven years old. This is my mom, and this is my grandma. I've always wanted to go to Tanzania for her 10th birthday, and then we had a loss in the family, and I was like, why are we waiting? Tomorrow's not promised. And then I saw a trip that was planned. I didn't have to do anything, so. <laughs> My name is LaDonia Williams. I'm from Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. Um, I looked a little bit into Maximum Impact and I I loved all the other trips they did. I thought it'd be an amazing opportunity and I was just really excited to come because I've never been to Africa before, so. Jumbo, Jumbo. My name is Harris Fulton, senior, okay? 
I'm from the U.S. state, Georgia, city, Atlanta. I became because of my wife wanted to come. I quite didn't want to come to Africa, okay? And when I came, got on the plane and the trip and everything, and I got here, you know, I said, we all gonna have an open mind. But one thing I can say, and now I got a smile on my face, and when I got here, the people were so nice. You know, when I got here, they were so kind. And I was like, oh my grace, the dinner I got to meet you guys, and y'all start telling me about the trip. And I said, okay, this is gonna be fun. Well, we are here for the East African Adventure. You all are part of the inaugural kickoff experience here in East Africa. Many of you have already been a part of our West African and, uh, inaugural experience, gateway experience in Ghana. This is very different. So for those who've been to Ghana, leave Ghana and go. <laughs> leave America and America. Leave Ghana and Ghana. You and I in Tanzania. You're going to have the experience to see the Maasai village. You're going to go to the Ngorongoro crater. You're going to go to um, the Serengeti. And uh, obviously Zanzibar, just a lot of activities. It's a fast paced, fast moving trip, but you do have opportunities to disengage and enjoy the beach. And Zanzibar has some of the nicest beaches you'll ever see. When I came here, I saw how much was withheld from us in the West. And so I know I had a responsibility to be that vehicle where people could come and see, and, and not just come and see from the standpoint of it being a tour, but from it being an experience. And so when people come and they get that experience, and I see how it transforms them, I see their reactions, I see those aha moments happen in others, that's what makes it worth it for me. Because I know how limited the exposure has been in our educational system, in our cultural system, in our entertainment, as it pertains to this continent of Africa. You, you, you have to be very quiet, and the fact that you are seeing something that this is this magnificent is awesome. Beautiful, wonderful. Hello, my name is Kayana Bradley. I am from Washington, D.C. So it's amazing because a lot of people, I'm a single woman as well, right? And a lot of times when you're single, you feel like you can't travel unless you have friends or unless you have a man. And for me, you know, I've always wanted to come to Africa and there was nobody who was available. All my other friends were either, you know, held up on other obligations or something that I don't have a man. So what is there for me to do? Um, but Jay, being able to see that he provided an opportunity, yeah, I had to fly here by myself, but being able to link up with a group who's able to explore and, and, and feel safe and not be by myself, I think that was a great, great way for me to still be able to live life outside by myself, but also within a community. One of the things that we do with Maximum Impact Travel is create these exposure opportunities. As you look around, there's one thing to watch it on a video, to read about it in a book, but to experience it for yourself is priceless. And that's what we look to do as we talk about bridging the gap and mending the fences. This is a part of it, creating exposure opportunities. And that's what we want you to do. We want you to have these exposure opportunities all throughout Africa, but this is just one of our adventures, the East African adventure in Tanzania. Now, when I talk about this, for many of us, we've been told these negative narratives about the continent of Africa and without even realizing the different countries, the different cultures, and this is just one aspect of it, just one aspect. And we want you to be able to have this experience firsthand right here in Tanzania. As you look around, families are coming together, generations. You have a grandmother, a mother, a granddaughter. You have families uh, bringing their other friends and family along with them. And that's what you can do. So we look forward to seeing you as a part of this Maximum Impact Travel Experience in East Africa.
All right, uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome, can everyone hear me? Everyone understands English? Everyone's here for a balloon ride? You're in the right place, because lion wrestling is over there. At this time, it is very loud and very hot, so you will know why we call it hot air ballooning. So if you're cold, we're gonna warm you up, okay? <laughs> My name is James Giesel. I um, I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm religious, but I'm you know more spiritual than anything. And I just believe that all things work for the good of the Lord, and that I might order my I might plan my ways, but God orders my steps. And uh, I believe you know when I met Jay, uh, everything changed. He uh, kind of inspired me to come to Africa and come on one of his tours. And I'm really just glad that I made that decision to come because since I've been going on his tours, which this is my second one, uh, it's just been one journey after another. It's been it's very exciting. I had met so many people. I've experienced so many things that I knew that I could never experience unless that I came on one of Maximum Impact's tours. In the Western world, most of us are familiar with animals and our connection to animals largely is with a zoo and we see them in captivity, but how often do we see them in their natural habitat, undisturbed, unbothered, and living as they should? And when that happens, it leaves an impression upon you that you never forget. It's pretty cool when they're in their natural habitat. You know, we see them in zoos, but to actually see them in their natural state, like, you know, it's really cool. So, it's, yeah. Oh, did you see how big? Did y'all see when y'all both hit the? Yeah. <laughs> he got out the way, didn't he? I think the name is appropriate because you do, you're impacted. You're impacted for life. Uh, some of the things that we experienced, that I have experienced on this journey, it's, uh, it's just fantastic. It's something that I would remember for the rest of my life. One of the things that I am adamant about is bridging the economic gap as well as bridging the culture gap. And it's so important for us to support the local communities whenever we visit a country or territory because oftentimes these places are exploited. You'll have what we know as culture vultures coming in and taking the culture, reproducing it in their country and then selling it back uh, on the open market as if it's authentic. And so one of the best ways to find authentic made um, artifacts, well not artifacts, but um, artwork and, and crafts is to be able to come and spend your money in these local villages. That's what we do. It is a must. I believe it's important for us to make sure that we keep our dollars in oh my those God. communities. So what we're doing is making sure that the local population gets the credit. The local population has a voice, and that's what this is all about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The fact how they built it in the different rooms and the fact that they have a little station for the baby cows. <laughs> I don't, and then the whole kitchen and everything is just yes. so compact, but it's so, I don't know, the way it's made is so small. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Very informative, very informative. And the structure is, for a hand-built structure, this is amazing. Let's go, 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 go. Uh, my name is Jeff, and I'm from Akron, Ohio, and I'm a police officer. Well, me and my wife went to Ghana, and there was a lot of questions from the kids. Um, you know, what was it like, this, that, and the other. So with us bringing the youngest one this time, now she'll have to answer some questions, but she got to see it for herself. And I think everyone should see it for themselves. <laughs> Akron, Ohio, in the house. Yeah. It's good to learn together. Experience is the best teacher. So even though when I went back last year, I kind of talked through my family with some things that I saw, and, but they can't really understand 
what I felt unless you see it for yourself. Faith Benson Little, these are my parents. Um, I'm from Akron as well. What else am I supposed to say? Whatever you want. What brought you here? Oh, they brought me here. <laughs> this is my college graduation gift. I'm from Akron, Ohio. My name is Faith Benson Little. I'm a teacher. I think it's important to come here to really change your mindset about the world around you. I feel like my culture first, or my age group, I guess, is stuck in like ourselves. Like we're social media and all that. We're always stuck in our own little bubble, our own little world. And we're so self-centered. And I feel like coming here makes you think of others and how, I don't know, just people around the world and how the world works in a different way than just it being about you. Later on, when Dr. Luis Leakey hear about all the stories, he wanted to know more about this place. One of the reasons why I like to bring people here and bring people to a lot of the historical places is one, to see the history with their own eyes, but then also to listen to how the narratives are being told. This place was funded by the European Union, and so as a result, the narrative is going to be told from a European perspective. It's important for us to make sure that we don't omit them from the stories. It's important for us to make sure that we include their stories in our stories and give them the same credit and uh, making sure that we're not co-conspirators to European supremacy. As I passed through this door, I'm reminded of the countless people who passed through the other way and never returned. As I return to this part of Africa, it is interesting to learn about the context of the story that most of us have never been taught about. Oftentimes we associate the slave trades with West Africa, but in reality, East Africa has a very compelling story. It's a story of brutality. It's a story of culture erasure. It's a story of lies, manipulations, but today what we're doing is breaking down those lies and we're gonna show you the beauty, we're gonna show you the unique qualities of the cultures located here in East Africa. And then we're gonna bring you to paradise in Zanzibar. And as you learn about this history, you'll understand why Africa is the wealthiest continent in the world. My name is Linda Pinkney. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina, and I am a retired educator. I want to tell everyone who might be thinking about coming to Africa to a visit for whatever reason, uh, open up your eyes and see <laughs> all the wonder and mystery of an African adventure to visit family. Uh, I don't own the rights to that. That is written by Jay Cameron. <laughs> Rather Red Hard Lives, which is um, the effort of um, serving this forest started around second half. My name is Dolores Smith. Um, we live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm a property tax analyst. It's like I just couldn't let it pass without us. So here we are. You met Taro. <laughs> He's a character, but we are enjoying it. A lot of people, in, and where I come from, the cultures I come from, they say, well, we don't have any cultural connection to Africa. We don't understand that. We don't, why go? We, we, we don't even speak the languages. You know, tell me what your tribe is. You don't even know your tribe. I said, and I asked them, I said, well, have you ever been? And I have yet to meet someone who has been. They could come back and say, well, yeah, yeah, yeah I've been. And I feel that same way. We are in Zanzibar, off the coast of mainland Tanzania in the Indian Ocean, 
but we're getting ready to go out on uh, two boats and we're going to tour around the island and have lunch and just gonna have a good time just chilling. Today is a chill day, uh, but I remember growing up looking in the magazines as a child and I would always see these tropical places and say, well, one day I wish I could get there, one day, one day. And, uh, and I realized as I was getting older that if I didn't make one day happen, it wasn't gonna happen. And so being here, this is my fifth time, I think, fourth or fifth time here in Zanzibar, and I feel just as at home here in East Africa as I do in West Africa, as I do in America. And it's all about how you're able to adapt and appreciate cultures, and that's really what's going on here. So uh, stick around because we got much more on the way. <laughs> I couldn't look hot. I couldn't look hot. <laughs> Name's Cyron Smith. And my middle name, Barry, from Detroit, Michigan, living in Lebanon, Tennessee right now. I'm retired from the post office. And, you know, I can't say I come from here, you know, but in my heart, this is it. We're waiting for the other boat. Waiting for the other boat. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> Admiring this beautiful spot. As I traveled throughout Africa, I began to see that the story was broader. The story was not just what they were telling us in America. The story was something so much larger, and the context was so much larger, and it was a global system that had been in place for more than 500 years. And the best way to keep it going is to keep people misinformed about it and to keep people separated. And that's what I would see. So me not having an interest in coming, me not wanting to be a part of it, was all a part of the plan. But when I came and I saw for myself that the people, because they would tell us, you know, the people in Africa don't like you. They're not going to welcome you as a brother or a sister. They're not going to do this. They're not going to do that. As if we're supposed to, as if they're supposed to see it through our lens and through our context. When in actuality, on the continent of Africa, they didn't see the that brother, that brother, sister, black, white thing that we see in America, they don't even see it that way here. They, their, their worldview is completely different. They don't see it through the eyes of racism, but we see it through those eyes. So when we come over here without really understanding it, we're expecting them to see it through the worldview of a black American or, or wherever someone might come from. And so because of that, for a lot of people, at least a disappointment because they have an expectation. They're expecting this you know, red carpet to be rolled out that really shouldn't be rolled out because it's not even, it's not a part of the culture in most parts of uh, Africa. But the truth of the matter is, once you understand the power, the people, the promise, the resources, the wealth, I can never refer to Africa as poor. The first religion was the Roastian Persian. Okay. The religion from Persia. From it's Persia. It's from okay. Persia, yeah. That the religion the Persian brought into this okay. country, while the African did not have specific religion. So Islam is not indigenous to Zanzibar. It's not the original religion in Zanzibar. No indigenous religion to Zanzibar. Okay. When it comes to dressing, you see women go covered. Yes. That does not express their religion here. It is more to their culture. Interesting the, that the you Christian say that. The Christian that born and raised in Zanzibar go covered. It is more to their culture than to their religion. It happened, anybody start religion fight is not from this island. Interesting. Yeah, and, uh, and, if somebody is uh, coming from this island, we are all together, brothers as one. So give me a little bit of history about this place right here. This is what I'm looking at right up here. Uh, here you're looking at the Arab fort. That's how we do call it, or you can call it Portuguese fort, or you can call it old fort, whatever. Because this been built by the Portuguese, been built by the Arabs. The Portuguese started, 
and then the Arabs came to accomplish. Mm. The Portuguese, apart from having a piece of uh, fort, which was not that big, they also had a village here. Like that piece of building, you see, you can see that piece of wall. Yes, right there. Mm. Yeah, with like a window. That is the original wall from the Portuguese chapel, which they built. So they had a Portuguese chapel here? Chapel, yeah, small church. Mm. They had it here. And this piece of wall here, you can tell that here was the building. Probably this was the size of the fort that built by the Portuguese. But after the war between the Omani against the Portuguese, the Portuguese lost the war. The Omani saw that the Portuguese would return. So that they decided to extend the size of the fort and they built all of this, you see, and the other side as well. The other side is as big as this one. But because the Portuguese never returned after they moved to Mombasa, Kenya, then Mozambique, this area once used as a place for execution by sword. And then it been used as a slave market. Slave market? Very little. Because slave market started at Kelele Square in the western side uh, of uh, Stone Town. And uh, then it came here for a short while. Then uh, the uh, official market was open where we have been at the Anglican Cathedral. So who, who were trading those who were enslaved? Were, were the Arabs, uh, were started, the Catholics? Or? It started during the Portuguese. Okay, so that's and Catholic. The, yeah, okay. and then it went on during the Omani until on 5th of, of June, 1873, slavery stopped. Any melanated person that has been ripped away from their ancestry uh, should journey to Africa um, just to have a connection with our lineage. Um, when you get here, the people are so welcoming that it's overwhelming because we honestly have heard all types of myths. Oh, you better be careful going there. And they just make it seem like you're going to get your organs snatched, you're gonna be, I mean, this is all kinds of things that are said about coming to Africa. And I've never felt better. Um, the fresh fruits, just the, the cleansing energy coming from the, the ocean that is also so very healing with the salt water it is just amazing. <laughs> so every melanated person should at least journey to Africa once. We used to produce a perfume, one among the best that you have, and now we like to call it a Chanel number no. zero. <laughs> well, the presentation of Africa my entire life has always been negative. When I was growing up, they would have songs about how Africa needed all of this support from America, or how they didn't have snow in Africa, and how charity was always needed in Africa. But once I really understood the full story about all of the natural resources that are here, and how much of the world exports from this continent but does not adequately compensate the people for what's being exported, being able to actually sell it right back to them. Once I understood that, and, and I understood that in many ways it was calculated to make those of us who descend from this continent not even want to come back or learn about it because if you keep that information withheld, what it then does is it causes an affection for where we may have been born without recognizing where we originate from. I see so much of us in each other. Like, I see so many similarities of people of color in America as people of color here in Africa, but it's, it's just something innate in us. As one of the uh, tour guides said, Africa is like born in you. Where I come from, I feel like a lot of people have different ideas about Africa and what they would see when they come here. But for me, I think going into new situations, I always try to be open and flexible. That's something I've learned over the years. But I try not to have too many perceptions and not too many expectations. Then you come into a new experience with open eyes and you're open to take anything on and you enjoy the experience more. So I think most perceptions are that like there it is nothing's really put together or like it's not organized i guess per se and i feel like i just came in thinking it like whatever i see i see and i knew from my parents too from going to ghana last year that was, it would be like it's actually a very beautiful place and everything so i was just excited to experience that for myself and not be closed-minded on anything 
I know my experience here on the continent has been very different. And if I never came and saw for myself, if I had listened to Smokey Robinson, listened to my family, listened to what all of these other people had to say, I would be missing out on some of the greatest experiences that I've ever had in my life. Bridging the gap, it's not just bridging the gap between Africa and the African diaspora, it's also bridging the gap between so-called African-Americans and other African-Americans. Minds are really close to what Africa really has to offer. Last thing I think just, everybody should just come at least once. We're gonna try to tell our friends and make a difference to let them know that some of the stereotypes that people do have about Africa are not true. It's just been beautiful being able to see all of the nature, all of the animals. It feels like I'm in a movie. I said, I just felt drawn in by it and it, it really was amazing. So that was like, <laughs> and that was everything for me. I was <laughs> Regardless of your ethnicity, I encourage you to see this continent of Africa for yourself. See one of the 54 plus countries on this continent. Don't take someone else's word for it because someone else's word might come from someone else's opinion, which might be based upon someone else's interpretation. There's nothing like interpreting for yourself. And that's what leads to the maximum impact. When you can see for yourself, when you can hear for yourself, when you can interpret for yourself. That is the power of travel. And no one can take that from you.